Holy Bunkos, kids, look out. <laughs> the Keep It Moving Tour is adding new dates. Ooh-wee. We're coming to a city near you. Come and see us. Some stand-up. And we play AYG at the end of the show with the crowd. We answer your garbage questions. We've got some trash so far, but I know, I know there's deeper garbage out there around the country. Oh, yeah. So come on out and see us. Kippy, tell them what they need to know. Oh, baby, we're all over the place. Tejas, baby. Uh-oh. August, uh, September 21st will be in San Antonio, Texas. Yes. September 22nd will be in Houston, Texas. September 23rd through the 25th, Austin, Texas, for the Moon Tower Comedy Festival. Look out. And I ain't done yet. August 26th will be at Fort Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. What? Then we're bringing it back to Long Island, baby. What? In all, uh, September 30th. And then we're coming home. The boys are co- the chickens are coming home to roost, baby. <laughs> <laughs> October 27th, we're going to be in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and then back down to Tejas, uh, November 5th through the 7th for Skank Fest South. Get those tickets. Yeah. The link will be in the description. Welcome to another exciting edition of Are You Garbage? The show where you find out if your favorite comedians are classy individuals or absolute trash. Now, here are your hosts, Kevin Ryan and H. Foley. Let's go, Matty. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody out there, and welcome back to everybody's favorite new podcast. This is Are You Garbage? It's a little show. We sit down with your favorite comedians, and we find out if they grow up to be classy or if they're just a big old piece of trash. I'm your host, H. Foley, coming at you on a beautiful day. We're down here in Aunt Tootie's basement. She's upstairs watching a little Jeopardy. Yeah. Excited for this new host, Mike Richards. Yeah, I think he's out, though. Going to be a little disappointed, yeah. I told her. She thinks it's Kramer, I think. <laughs> <laughs> My co-host is coming at you from across the Ooh, table. Yeah. This is a family episode. Just a fam. Circle in the wagons a little bit. He is the CEO of Are You Garbage? Kind of the head bozo around here. Here. Uh-huh. So do me a favor, show him a little respect and Please. give it up for my best pal, Mr. Kevin James Ryan. Hey, motherfuckers. What's up? Welcome to AYG. Uh, this, please make sure you rate, view, subscribe on iTunes. Yeah, be nice. Full video is available on YouTube, and as you know, those numbers are Ooh. true to the roof. True the fucking roof, baby. Cooking over there. And I got to hire another grill man. <laughs> we're, we're, we're Owners mar- were getting back We're in the up. market for a fucking line cook. Who knows one? Let's go. <laughs> Bring your own spatula. We got the aprons. There you go. Um, And then Patreon.com, obviously. I would be a jerk off if I did not bring up patreon.com you can sign up there you get bonus episodes of AYG weekly you get uh, bonus episodes of hard feelings which are a whole nother podcast on its own you get that weekly who's that guy who's the guy that started patreon who's behind that Musk That's fucking Johnny Patreon <laughs> I went to school with his kid <laughs> Steven Eric Patreon. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I don't know his name. Find him and kiss his feet. <laughs> fucking dude, I'll give him a fucking handy. Yo, one of the founders of Patreon's name is Sam Yam. <laughs> Yo, shout out to the Yam Company, Yam Incorporated, and all of its subsidiaries. And the whole Yam family. <laughs> Buddy, I'm a Yam man. You choose, okay? <laughs> you can join Patreon for a 5, 10, 20, or $50 level. You choose. I don't care if it's Kim Jong-un. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> the Yam family. Family. I hear all of their great people. The uh, Shout out to the Yams. Shout out to them. Uh, yeah, sign up on Patreon. Plus, guys, live shows. We're going to be coming to fucking Texas. Oh, yeah. Guys, when this comes out in like two or three weeks. We're be- smoking through Texas. Do we got fuck- San Antonio. San Antonio. Houston. Houston. Austin for the Moon Tower Fest. Austin for Moon Tower and Fest. And then closing it out over there in Fort Worth, Dallas. Fort Hyenas. Worth, baby. It's going to get some fucking tickies. Then we also have. See Dallas on a Sunday. We have Long Island coming up. Yes, we do. We got uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Go you down better there. show up and come the fuck out the 27th of October. Helium Comedy Club. Let's fucking go. The boys are coming home. I'm Woo! giving wedgies, nuggies, and swirlies. <laughs> the line starts around the corner. Let's go. The theme song is Worst Behavior. <laughs> We're coming back. Motherfuckers never loved us. See, uh, you said Tootsies. Uh, yeah, and we'll also have an NYC day dropping very soon. Yes, we will. Very excited. And how about a nice uh, shout out to our producer extraordinaire. Who that? The magic man. He huh? makes us all look good. He's the brains behind that Jersey Shore video that everybody's been falling all over themselves about. Give it up for T-Bone McMuffin. God damn it. It's Toby McMullen. <laughs> What's up, dude? What up, T-Bone? Nothing. It's over here. I got a 
frosty beverage just staying so ice cold thanks to this like a gentleman koozie it's a plug fest guys oh it's a plug heavy plug fest like a gentleman koozie i got a a three-day pass to plug fest (laughs) (laughs) i wear them as mittens I, I put a testicle in each one of them. And the real story is fucking Jeff Bozo's over here ordered four million of these things. We got them clamoring up the studio. <laughs> Jeff Bozo's is so good. <laughs> this guy. Well, you're not getting your cut then. All right. We're all backed up on Kindles over here. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Not doing on it. What are we doing? Yeah. We got a goofy one already, boys. What are we doing? We're drowning in goose. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm looking at 17,000 of them right now. <laughs> I ordered 100,000 koozies. I ordered more koozies than we have listeners. My mom asked me to bring a couple home. I said, how many? She goes, 12. I'm like, what the fuck, Patty? Yeah, she's having a couple of the boys over. You know what I mean? Also, yeah, Foley starts giving away the merch to all of his fucking dirtbag family members. <laughs> hey, I need nine T-shirts for the boy. Ah. My aunt needs a my aunt needs a fucking apron, the I, whole nine yards. A keep it moving tour shirt makes a great christening gift. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> He'll grow into it. Yeah, wrap the baby in this. <laughs> Tell them we're coming to Texas. Tell them we're coming to Texas. Yo, Bunk C looks like our roadies. <laughs> hey, Fada, you ever been, you ever been to Texas? You got any family down there in Texas? <laughs> oh, good stuff. We're having a good time. Gang, fucking family episode. We're not screwing around this episode. We're getting into your Patreon questions. We're going to rattle them off. Fucking Kippy, hit it. <laughs> I love how you go, okay? My job's over. I did want to... Exp- what, what would you like to say? Well, I'd ask... Henry, you I have want, the floor. I want to ask uh, how garbage you think this is. I mean, I recently, hey. I recently discovered some uh, some previous employment from this producer you uh, you talk up so much. Okay, yeah. Are you aware that Mr. McMullen used to be a canvasser? Really? Yep. Hitting people up on the street. Who'd you used to work for? Oh, my God. I work for like four different places. What's the big one? The ASPCA or whatever that nobody ever gets the money? I'm not going to listen to you. (laughs) Get out of my way, okay? Dude, they were heavy in Philly around like 2008 to 2013. Uh, That's why we met. They were on every corner. Is it? He was there canvassing. Now I remember. No, it's not. He came to Philadelphia to canvas. You were a traveling canvasser? <laughs> yeah. They, they said- a gypsy canvasser? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> Who'd you work for? I can't remember who the big one was, but they'd hit you up. And you just knew. Ones- I think Children International was the name of the organization. That sounds like a scam Yeah, which arena. they never get a dime of that money. Oh, no, no. It's Dialogue Direct is the company. Total scam. Yeah, it's a third party. Yeah, yeah, Ex- yeah. They're a for-profit company who takes most of the money and then gives a percentage to the... Uh, organization they represent. You yeah. fucking sleazeball. I did that too for the. You did? No, well, I Man, did. I'm the- in bed with some fucking shysters over here. <laughs> I look clean as a whistle. <laughs> no, you don't. You got dandruff all over the back of your shirt, but just saying. This is more of a hard feeling. I like it. Huh? Um,. I did. I told you I did it for the for the cop, the fraternal order of police. Oh and yeah, stuff that's like right. That. You yeah, were that's in a, you were in the boiler room. <laughs> this guy fucking Man. pump and dump Ryan over. But that here. that brings up a that's a fucking perfect transition. This is uh first question, uh, guys. As you know, that's when, why I'm in the hot seat, baby. You think I don't earn my keep around here? I know what's going on. You don't see the question. Delicate genius. <laughs> the super glue seat, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. For the listener, fully super glued his seat together. Before we record it, like two ounces of super glue is gonna hold is gonna fight back four hundred pounds. And my basketball shorts may or may not be stuck to the seat. <laughs> to be quite honest. All right, with I'll you. see you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> That's like when you tuck the, the tablecloth into your sh- thinking it's the napkin. All right, guys, I'll see you. <laughs> the whole table goes. I just stay here till you guys leave. Come back Tuesday morning. I'm still sitting there. Got a long beard. Hey guys. <laughs> Oh, man, the big man's got the giggies. Kippy's got his number today, folks. (laughs) Very good. (laughs) I don't know if the people find it as funny as we do, but I am loving it. (laughs) Having a good time over here. (laughs) Guys, so as you know, when you join Patreon, we'll answer uh, one of the perks of joining the Patreon is we'll answer your garbage question. Uh, Shout out to the Yam family (laughs) and the estate. (laughs) Um, this one comes from Dallas, which where we'll be. Holy shit. <laughs> this is a fucking plug around, dude. Uh, first time question. What's the shortest amount of time you've ever held a job? For con- First question, where do I get tickets for the Dallas show? <laughs> for, for con- okay, fantastic question. <laughs> I would go to www. <laughs> After I left Patreon.com, I would probably stop. <laughs> 
What if, that, what if that's all the, what the questions became? <laughs> Just us trying to, trying to grip. Hey, sweet koozie you're If using. I wanted to send cash directly to Foley, where could I send it to? That's a great question as well. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Okay. All right. Let's get serious. Quit Let's, screwing yes, around. Quit screwing around. We got business to attend to. <laughs> I mean, this isn't Hyenas Comedy Club in Fort Worth, Texas. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is it September 26th at 7 o'clock in Fort Worth, Texas? <laughs> Did you just check that on your movement watch? <laughs> I got a good good, good night's sleep on my Helix. Uh, <laughs> Fall asleep listening to my Raycons. Uh, <laughs> Stamps. No, all right. Well, let's, let's all right, see. quit it's, screwing. Quit screwing around. We got a lot of business Toby. to attend to. This is from Dallas. First time question. What's the shortest amount of time you ever held a job? For context, I worked at a bagel shop for four hours and a Rite Aid for 90 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Right, Aids, hey, that's hard to do because there's training involved. Yeah, that's in like that. a corporate job. You got to pass a background check or something. They can't be letting you buy the pills. 90 minutes. 90 minutes. Jesus Christ. I so want to know if it was him or the, there's no way Right Aid fired him in 90 minutes. That's got to be like, I, I'm not doing this. I've, I've yeah, taken a, that jobs. That sounds like a walkout to me. I've taken jobs where I'm gonna where I'm like, there's no way I'm sticking around here. I always but, wanted to take one last waiting, jo- waiting tables job so I could quit the first day. Oh. Just to, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. make myself feel better. Hey, Henry, this, I, is I, where, this is where we keep the napkins. <laughs> fuck you, I'm out of here. All right, man, what the fuck? Just take out your your 14 years of waiting well, tables I always, on one I, guy. I always wanted to have a job that I didn't need, but I was never in that in that position. Where you're, I barely, <laughs> you're barely in that position now. Can I just keep Sundays? <laughs> <laughs> hey, can I do the brunch shift? Nobody wants to work during the day, right? All uh, right. I had a, uh, I worked at a, a forklift battery place when I was in college. Quit bragging. <laughs> was that an internship? It was. It was an in- it was an unpaid internship where like I wasn't getting credits or paid. I was just like, uh, go- this was back in the day when you could that was still flying. I'm like, yeah, just come here and work type thing. I would send out not cold calling, not knocking on door. I would send out cold faxes. I just had like a list of fax numbers. I would just stand there like beep boop pop boop boop. Facts like a one sheet over of like, hey, did you ever get any bites? What? No, <laughs> what the fuck are you? You got to be some kind of loser to <laughs> fall for that. <laughs> the facts got you. Holy shit, man. <laughs> yeah, no, I never sold shit. I was. It was a very short. It was like I was supposed to come in like every Friday or something. It was like one of those things, just so I'd have it on my resume of like. <laughs> Really had your foot on the gas, didn't you? <laughs> Dude, who's running that company? Like, you can ignore a call. You can't ignore a fax. <laughs> you can't walk away from a paper, kid. <laughs> Either way, that sounds annoying as shit, huh? Am I right? <laughs> That'll get your attention. Yeah, and I uh <laughs> I remember my dad had the fax machine set up down in his office <sighs> for a little while. Yeah. And like <laughs> Up until like maybe like three years ago. I think we there's still one at my mom in the basement. It's not hooked up, and, but there's still one. And there. every once in a while, you'd be sitting there watching a ball game and fucking all of a sudden you hear R2-D2 <laughs> going off in the corner. And you're like, Trip what wire's the been f- hit. Yeah, what the fuck is this? Yeah. And like some menu will slide out. <laughs> Direct, they know their market. <laughs> hey, Angelo's hit us with the new with, with the new specials today. <laughs> all right, I'll get this scampi. <laughs> <laughs> See if they'll do a salad with the pasta. I'll make a deal. Uh, <sighs> yeah, but I left that. Pl- I pulled in. I think on my second or third day, maybe I pulled in, hung like still drunk from the night before. It was a college like dollar beers on a Thursday night at like you know the local fucking watering hole. Mm-hmm. I pull in and just still drunk, like and just being like, I can't. There's no way I can go in there and do this. I was chugging a red Gatorade, thinking it was going to fight, like just hoping to string string a couple of hours together. <laughs> and my boss walked by, he's like, oh, hey. And I was like in the car, and I just like, Rrr. I was in my mom's gray bravada. Just fucking hit the fucking bricks, dude. It was, and even worse, it was in it was in a stone parking lot because it was in like a warehouse. Like, a, you know, an indu- so as I did it, like I hit him with dust and pebbles. I was, and like fucking sprayed him. It was like fucking later, nerd. See you around, losers. Yeah. Starting my own fax company. Yeah. He, well, he hit me up a couple years later. He was getting together like a soccer magazine or something. He's like, you or anybody you know want to sell? I'm like, nah, man, I'm fucking out of here. 
This guy sucks. <laughs> yeah, this guy's got the worst fucking products in the world. <laughs> He's pitching shit to you? Yeah. <laughs> no, it was more like, do you want to sell at, do you want to work for us? He's like, I didn't want to work for you the first time, <laughs> asshole. Yeah, didn't I leave you in a parking lot somewhere? Pulled out like one of the Duke boys. <laughs> uh, Great question. That was a fantastic question. Um, I made it a week, one place. I think it's the shortest. Me and my brother, I think we talked about this. Me and my brother got these jobs. It was like a, it was a union contract, but they needed non-union people, but they were paying union rates. Yeah, they will pay, like that's, with the union, I forget exactly what it is, but they're like, you can take on non-union guys, but you have to pay them like yeah. two-thirds of a regular union A wage. family friend owned the company. Yeah. And he, they, hi, they hired, they, we were, we were, we were. Nothing on that. <laughs> fucking switch. Should have been outside your house with a fucking rat. We were, we were lining coax cable through a high school, and we had no idea what we were doing. Sure. Just fucking breathing like asbestos and insulation every every day in the, like in the, in the drop ceilings. Mm-hmm. We we're like crawling through there. <laughs> Pulling and, his brother like, coax goes in, copper comes yeah. out. <laughs> Somebody put a bunch of empty wire in here. <laughs> Just all PVC. <laughs> yeah, they realized we had no idea what we were doing. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, all right, let's see here. <laughs> this is from uh, Mavi, I think it is. Uh, yeah. Uh, you had to have a question read. Ever needed to have a paper license plate taped to your back window? I see them more and more these days, and I don't know why. I had one for too long on the Tiga. When I got the, t- so sometimes if they don't have, it's like a temporary plate, right? But I don't get when I got the Kia. They hand I I left there with the fucking steel on the car, the front and the back, the new New York Johns. Really? Yeah. Damn. Yeah. They right away. But when I bought the, it was I think it's more used cars. When I bought. I bought it from like a rinky dink, like, you know, one of those like uh, they have the corner lot and there's like a trailer on it type thing. I never understood that. And there's all different kinds of cars, yet they stay in business for like 50 years. Yeah, there's good fucking you make good, you make good margins on them. There's one in, there's one in our area that's been that's been there forever. Yeah. I've never seen anybody buy a car there and they keep getting bigger and bigger every year. Yeah, I don't know. I, we bought a car. It was like a family friend or something like that. Friend of my stepdad's. Same thing. And the day I turned in, I finally took it down, you know, a year later or whatever. Like You had a temporary tag for a year? I think it was on there. I just never taken it off. Like I Is had, it paper? Yeah. What did it look like? Old homework by the end? <laughs> it was like a little frazzled for sure. The light had got the sun had gotten to it a little bit. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um and uh they when I turned my fucking uh Montego in there was still the p the top piece of tape was on the inside of the back window still I would Jesus. every time I looked at my rear oh you had it like, inside yeah of course oh that's I'm talking about the ones that are that are where the license plate should be oh. though nice the, the paper white ones they gotta last like an hour I mean when I see them I'm, I'm always I'm always happy for people I'm like oh this guy got a new car you know I see a lot or of them can't these afford days. license plates dude in the fucking window that is a tough tough look yeah I would not ride with my parents in the car. If our license plate was in the fucking rear window. Well, it's temporary until the tags come. Then the tags came. I put them on and just, I guess I never took down. The piece of tape was there for, I think I had that car for like eight years. Jeez. Boys, I just found maybe my favorite story in Are You Garbage history. I'm listening. Used car king of New York busted in prolific paper license plate scam. Oh, there you go. Dog. More and more of them. This fool sold as many as 3,000 phony paper tags in the past year alone, pocketing $250,000 in cash. Damn. That doesn't seem like that much, though. For 3,000? Each one's about 8 Gs, if I'm doing the math right. That's not right. Yeah, it is. 3,000 times 8,000 is more than 250,000. What is it? Uh, it would be $800. Huh? 800, 800,000? What? No. You said he made two hundred and some thousand. Yep, he sold three thousand of them. Yeah, for like eighty three bucks a piece. Yeah, oh, eighty three bucks. Yeah, not eight thousand bucks a piece. <laughs> okay, but here, but be like, but, but be like a billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? But are you ready for the? That for the, doesn't. If you're doing a scheme, that doesn't seem. I'm scheming bigger than that. Shout out to the yams. Are you Are you ready for the for the AYG kicker? Okay. <laughs> Ocasio, whose criminal record dates to 1996, was arrested Tuesday at a Long Island Buffalo Wild Wings. Yes. Nice. Come on. 
Going out in style. That's like 250K untaxed in your bank account. Covered in blue cheese. You got your fucking <laughs> wing sauce on your face. What took you so long as they walk up? <laughs> Smoking a celery stick. <laughs> the waitresses are all crying in the corner. They took Jimmy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's a tough look. The the temporary tag or plate is bad uh, news, man. Yeah. Bad fucking news. All right, in the same vein, this is from McLean. I have not had one read yet. Ever give the finger to a student driver? <laughs> you got to be a real cold bastard to do that. Give the kid a break. <laughs> anybody that does that, man, I don't know how anybody has the patience for that. What patience? A, I don't have the fucking a nerves. Teacher, my I don't even like it when you're driving. Oh, my God, I'd be a wreck. Oh, dude. S- sitting next to some fucking 16-year-old. I did see one time we were about 14, 13. I don't know, probably younger. Probably They're younger. never nice cars either. They're always no. tough looks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, The big thing oh, for Can us you imagine was- driving that off off shift? If, you got, if that's your only, if that's the main, the main mode of transportation, oh, look. <laughs> pulling up to the, the, the norm bar. sign on the top. <laughs> no, yeah, it's bad. Bro. Pulling up to the bar at that Trying day. Trying to get late in the student driver car. <laughs> you ever see two brakes? <laughs> yeah, you're all fucked up in the passenger seat, hitting the brake on your buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that hey, would go, be, will you go? <laughs> that would be fun. <laughs> hey, it's a green light jerk off. Now we're talking. Where do we get our hands on one of these things? I did see one time uh, we were we were playing laser tag at like the at the ultra zone. Shout out to you. Did you have ultra zones by you? There was a couple of them. I think now, they were like a bigger chain. There's a couple now. I don't know. It's called Urban Urban Air. There's a couple now in our Those area. are trampolines. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't we didn't have a laser tag uh, set up. Yeah. Ultra zone. They were by like the, there was always like one by a mall. I felt like there was a handful of them, so I assume they were more widespread. I only knew two kids that had laser tag. One was my cousin, and we only had what, one. What, parties? No, just in general. What do you mean? I wasn't in that life. I wasn't about that. It came out. You were too old when it got cooking. I No, I remember. I you remember. were, because I was like on the cusp of like, this is corny, but it's still kind of fun. When it when it got popular, I just remember my cousin had one, but just one. What do you mean one? I don't know. He just had one it at the gun. house? Yeah, one oh, gun. No, I'm talking about going and playing. No, just one gun. I'm sorry. I have to pause. I'm going to shit myself. I'm Again? Dude, I'm so sorry. Jesus. I'm so sorry. Gang, this podcast is brought to you by our good friends at BetterHelp. Yep. Is there something holding you back, something you want to get off your chest? You got to go to BetterHelp and get yourself straightened out. They match you with a licensed therapist in the privacy of your home within 48 hours. Kippy, straighten them out. Yeah, guys. It's not a crisis hotline. It's not a self-help line. Mm-mm. It's professional counseling done securely online. Professional. Guys, the pandemic, I mean, we're still in it. We're still kicking around. You, you know, you don't want to have to go sit in a lot, sit in the you lobby of a place. You can't be sitting in some waiting room reading some uh, Sports Illustrated from 98. Come on. Yeah, and plus you can, like, uh, the, the place I used to go, I could hear the person before me. Then I know the person while I'm in there, the person who's waiting behind me can hear me crying about my dad or whatever. You don't need it, right? Uh, it's easy Bald peasy. kid's a real screwball. <laughs> um, you can do it worldwide. You just log into your account anytime. You can send a personal message to your counsel. You get a timely and thoughtful response. Plus, you can schedule weekly videos or phone sessions. Like we said, no waiting rooms. It's easy peasy, uh, lemon squeezy. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they make it easy and free to change counselors if you want to. Look at that. I mean, what are we doing here? What are we doing? It's easy. Uh, so visit BetterHelp.com slash garbage. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P. And join over the one million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. Look at that. Everyone's getting, everyone's taking care of their mental health. You got to do it too. Get on it. Special offer for Are You Garbage issues listeners. You'll get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash garbage. One more time, guys. Get a pen, get a paper, write it down. Betterhelp, H E L P dot com slash garbage. Kippy Raycon wireless earbuds. Best in the biz. I'll say it again. Raycon wireless earbuds. I'll say it one more. Raycon wireless earbuds. But you don't got them. You got the other brand. Yeah. I'm the one bebopping down the street to my upbeat tunes yeah. with my Raycons in. Your coolness factor went up 15% when uh, I gave them to you. I'll be on the phone. You think I'm talking to you? I put you on hold. Boom. I'm right back to the playlist. <laughs> you you walk what... around with CEO vibes when oh, you got them in. I love them. They fit perfectly in your ear. They're mm-hmm. very comfortable. Battery lasts forever. Volume's unbelievable. The best. Love them. And when you put them in, it goes pow. 
power on. Ooh, and I dig that. You feel like a robot. Oh, yeah. Check it. Tune it in. <laughs> Beep, boop. Uh, guys, Bring me the, sandwiches. <laughs> they started half the price of other premium audio half brands. Half the price, but, too. But they sound just as good. I think better. And they feel better in your ears. I'll be honest with you. They fit comfortably in there. Also, I'm going to hit you with. They come with a 45-day happiness guarantee. So if you re- so you really can't lose. Give them a try, and you'll see what the big man is telling you about. Oh, yeah. Um, right now, uh, Are You Garbage li- listeners can get 15% off the Raycon order to at buyraycon.com slash garbage. One more time, guys. That's buyraycon.com slash garbage. You'll save 15% on Raycons. You'll be cool like Foley. Yeah, you you'll will. You'll be a little bit of a robot. Mm-hmm. You'll look cool to your friends. You'll sound cool on the phone. You'll be bopping, scatting around. That's buyraycon.com slash garbage. Do it. Yeah. Now back to, to the, the show. show. Yeah, no, no, no ultrazone. No ultrazone. No. Yeah, I, I meant, yeah, the place, we never had it. Nobody ever had one at the house. That's how, see, I think you're thinking laser, th- I think you missed uh, 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 the beginning of laser tag. That was sold as a home gun. Yeah, but they were never good or No, worked. it sucked. That's what I'm That's saying. That's what I'm saying. You go to Ultrazone, you it get It didn't fucking- start getting corporate until you guys were kids. Well, Kip, I can tell you there's some unhappy customers of the Ultrazone down there in Benson, Salem, PA. Benson, Salem, this guy. <laughs> fucking learn how to read before you ta- before you come at me and the good people of Lower Bucks County, okay? Where do you live? Benson Hedges? <laughs> <laughs> Benson Hedges, PA? Can you buy me a Ben Salem cigarette, please? It's Ben Salem, you bozo. All right. Well, this review is of the Ultra Zone in Bensonhurst. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is from Ryan, <laughs> who's a grown ass man with sunglasses and a backwards hat and his avatar for Google reviews, which you stink already. I, one star review from one year ago. So Ultra Zone still going. Damn, they're still can't unless he's been holding a grudge for a couple of years. <laughs> I thought oh, I'm clo- gonna I'm gonna wait and get him. I thought it closed good. a fucking decade ago. This is unreal. I will begin this review by stating that I am utterly disgusted and disappointed, all caps, with the unsportsmanlike environment. I <laughs> there was guys covering their packs. I shot him. He had his hand over his. Over You're the- dead. I got you. I got you. <laughs> it's a grown man with a car payment. The staff allowed. Doubt one of- it. By the way, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the staff allowed one of their friends slash coworkers named Steve. Con- parentheses confirmed by two employees. <laughs> God. <laughs> to participate using a vest that was very clearly programmed to not disable its gun when shot. The player parentheses Steve. Oh my God. <laughs> did not leave the arena with everyone else and stayed inside. The arena. Using- <laughs> 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 the arena of combat. I mean. <laughs> I will have my vengeance in this life or another. Game master! <laughs> That's what you have to do. Two men enter Steve's, leaves what he wants. Yeah. Uh, uh, not only does this kind of behavior show a clear and blatant disregard for fair play, but also a high level of unprofessionalism as a business. If management takes the time to read these reviews, I hope you take the time to speak with your employees, parentheses, and Steve about this type <laughs> of behavior. Steve needs to hear about what's so going on here. be corrected in the future. Ultrazone's got to work on their vetting process, huh? I mean, it's also like... Uh, you ever shoot a gun before? Yeah, you hide. Yeah, hide. It was... Uh, yeah, the ultras. That specific ultra zone was the one we would dabble in for sure. However, Benson and I bet you they threw a nice fucking slice at you, buddy. They had a birthday party room that would knock your fucking socks off. I'm telling you, like the Bellagio in there. <laughs> Thirty-two Walk in, degrees. You get a stack of quarters to play the games. Ooh. You yeah. know what's not too shabby? I don't fucking shake a stick at it. A pitcher of soda. I mean, we've talked about this before, <laughs> but if you come heavy with a fucking I see. Uh, I like Pepsi out of a pitcher. Nice pitcher breathe, of soda. Let's breathe some, a little bit. Oh, <laughs> packed with ice, pouring it from the side so you get a little oh, ice in your cup. That was hold on. When you were a kid, and you saw Dad do that for the first an old, time, that was an older person thing. My head explode. My cousins could do it. I could. Oh yeah. We would go Took to skill. We would go to Sam's, and you'd sit. You'd get a pie, and you'd sit at Sam's Pizza down there in uh, Wildwood. And they would give you a pitcher. You oh, would, they would? Yeah. They would give you a pitcher oh, of birch beer. We didn't get to do dine-in service. Um, we did it on the boardwalk like animals. Oh, uh, when we went. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. By the way, I, I've said this. I want to say it publicly. I know it's been covered uh, by the experts, but one of the best slices of pizza I've ever had in my life. Sam's Pizza is a home run. Holds up. Home so run. It's not just good shore pizza. It's fucking good pizza. Fantastic. 
I think other. I'm Toby McMullen, and I think other wise. I, the, the, the tomatoes really need to shut up. Yeah, kick rocks. It's nerd. like the best pizza from a Chuck E. Cheese you'll ever have. You're nuts. How? Uh, we'll get into this. Get a haircut and call your father. <laughs> yeah, all right? right. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Prez gave it a seven nine. Yeah. Come on. And you were like, he, you got to respect what he says. You got to respect. It's what the he... only review of his that I've ever disagreed with. Oh, oh my God. God. You're he was a... pressured into it. What, you follow him around people? like Dave Matthews? You're a fucking bozo. Don't you kill that fly? There no. He Don't. He's been landing on me. Tickles my leaves on your face. <laughs> All right. This, this, this episode. Buckles. <laughs> Taking him home with me. Um. All right, let's see. Uh, I, this is uh, this is from Elizabeth, and we've touched on this, I'm sure, on the side. You, I think you have. I haven't. Have you ever gone sledding on something that wasn't an actual sled? I still think about it to this day. I've discussed it multiple times in the podcast. The famous Unisys Hill in Union Meeting, Pennsylvania. The cardboard <laughs> snow sled. Yeah. Me and my brother, day off of school, new in town. Just moved into town line apartments. Oven mitts on his Didn't gloves. Have <laughs> <laughs> Didn't have a lot of friends. Still don't. Oven mitts sewn to his jacket. <laughs> <laughs> so he doesn't lose them. Fat know. little bastard. <laughs> Plus, I got a pot roast in the oven. <laughs> um, yeah, my mom's off from work. I feel like she did it to be strong. There's no way. That this woman thought that aerodynamically that this was going to work. She don't know what's going Just on. Just pure physics. She said she used to do it when she was a oh, kid. Listen, the 20s were a weird time. He was a, he was Nothing a, on that. <laughs> using a cardboard box as a fucking sled. We just went, ugh. Into yeah, the you're snow. not going anywhere. Oh, Do you remember man. what kind of box it was? <laughs> <laughs> Cereal? <laughs> a Fruit Loop box. Ah, it stunk, man. The other kids are looking at us like we were aliens. It was fucking brutal. Oh, of course. Talk about not making friends. Not to mention she tried it and rolled down the hill. Now she's covered in snow, yelling at us. The fucking boxes are <laughs> I all I told wet. you assholes this wouldn't work. <laughs> she's selling us out. Oh, man. It was a tough look. Yeah. And I remember we went to like a Kmart or a Walmart. Because we we had just moved, so we had to get rid of our... For some reason, the sleds couldn't make the trip. So they got 86th in a yard sale the week before we fucking blew out of town. Um, but we price-checked a couple sleds in kicking, Kmart. Kicking the tires on Probably them. like five, ten bucks. You know, a little circle jaunt. Like, the no, saucers. No, no, we're not getting that. <laughs> now let's go embarrass ourselves in the new neighborhood, kids. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I love you, Patty. Good stuff. Yeah, that's a tough look. You you probably had all the hot shit because you were a divorce kid. Playing uh, fucking both ends against the middle. You were out like car shopping probably. <laughs> Go to the lot and see what they have. Probably you know, with the fucking handbrake, your little nah. brick. You have the handbrake. <laughs> fucking scumbag, the two-seater. Picking up chicks. <laughs> <laughs> um, You're turfing me. No, we, had, we weren't a big sled Maybe like just one or two of the cheapo uh, plastic drones. You know what I mean? We had a couple of the radio flyers left over. Those we, things. We had were one left. Death traps. I don't know where that. That was what I was going to say. I don't know where the fuck it came from. The wooden ones with the rails on it. With the, with the red metal rails. Oh, uh, and you'd we would die in those things. We would wax up the rail. My dad's like, "You got to wax these up." I'm like, "All right, dude." That's. Like- I went down my fucking hill, <laughs> like dude, cooking down this thing. You could have went in August. This thing, like was, dude. Train. These things were so slick. Yeah, but you had to. Th- those were for old time winters. They were for winters when it was like forty below. Yeah, they weren't for and fluffy it, snow. It, no, you need to be on like a, a ski hill. You had to go down. <laughs> you had to go down a tire track on that thing. Yeah, dude. Yeah, those things would get cooking. Good luck steering with that thing. No, oh, no, you're fucking <laughs> fucking dead. The God's man. driving there. <laughs> <laughs> God, take the wheel on the radio flyer. <laughs> the only sled that had a sp- compartment for your smokes. <laughs> <laughs> had a cigarette lighter in it. <laughs> Fuck that. Yeah, those things are fucking tough. The I, best my ones- dad brought, he goes, yeah, we got this. And I, I had been in every inch of our house, and he broke that out. You, I don't know what. I still, to this day, think he had it in the crawl space. <laughs> That was the. I'm like, we don't own this. Where did you get this? 
He goes, yeah, this was mine. When I, I don't know if it was his or like, something. Jesus. Man, this thing was rickety. <laughs> I tell you that. For sure, dude. <laughs> Like being on a fire escape downtown. <laughs> it, was, yeah, it was like that scene in Cool Runnings where they show the inside of the sled and the bolts are falling out and shit. Like they're going too fast and the old sled breaks. <laughs> You're going backwards down there. Me and my brother in the bathroom. <laughs> Practicing leans. <laughs> you want to live, don't you? <laughs> hey, Kippy, you dead yet? <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> oh, great question. Oh, man. I want to make sure we go. I want, I want to go sledding this year. Okay. I mean, you're too big to be. That's too much velocity. You have to lose like a little couple a couple of pounds. <laughs> Take out a city bus. I know. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That was like when we had Bobby on for the first time. Bobby talked about how he hurt himself. Oh, Stupid. <laughs> then we made the joke that he may have too much momentum that he went through past the end of the hill, ends up on the highway. He keeps going, gets caught in an easy pass. Uh, oh, it's pretty good stuff. Um, all right, this one's from Kevin. Um, does anyone, does anyone you know, fish without a standard fishing pole? They're using something else. That canoodling, that fucking, you get them on your... It, canoodling? <laughs> I don't know any canoodlers. It's, it's just noodling. Oh, whatever. Noodle, it's amazing how many attractive women noodle, I'll tell you that, according to Instagram. I mean, yeah, on TV, yeah. They're not, you're not going to really find them at the bog. You couldn't pay me a billion dollars to get in that water, let alone stick my hand on the fucking side of a creek into rocks, trying to fucking go into a fucking catfish's summer home. Are you out of your fucking mind? <laughs> There with my pants on. Get the fuck out. Hey, where's he at? <laughs> hey, you said this hole, right? Put a rub a little power bait on my pee pee. You got a snorkel. Oh, man. Uh, whew, <laughs> no, okay. Every once in a while, going down, the, going down the shore, going down the beach, you know, a bunch of families would come. There was always somebody on the fringes that usually didn't come down. Or maybe they, the family that did their own thing where the dad would like, yeah, do something with like um, a spool of fishing line on like a wooden stick. He would like fish like that, like off the bridges. We've I've I've like attempted that more as of like it's a summer day and we have nothing as like a nine year old. And you're like, oh, well, today's going to be 47 hours. Like I got to kill some time. You know what I mean? You get into some mischief. We would like fuck around with that, but never like, yeah, never knowing that as an adult, we're going to try to catch them. It was more like, let's see if we can figure this no, out. No, this was their move. He'd show up with one of those primer buckets, those huge paint buckets, and he'd have all his shit in there. Like a couple of fucking things to cut the line and bait and this and that. Goober I'm like, town. Like, you rip your fucking fingers off with this. Yeah, I don't fuck with Head that. Head over to Dick's. Get a fucking. <laughs> get, a, get a rod and reel, will <laughs> yeah, you? Get your shit together. Uh, um, let's see. All right. This one's from Joshua. Ever participate in your school's talent show? No. I could have done it. I could have done the senior class show. But I was in. I was in you some, guys don't get me. I was in an argument with my girlfriend and didn't go. Were you guys going to bang on stage or something? <laughs> I don't know. I can't remember what it was, but I was still working at West Coast Video, and I purposely didn't go, and I picked up a shift at West Coast. Listen, I'm going to pick up a shift. I'd rather earn money than spend money, all right? You could have played Sunny Day. I was, in, uh, I was in it in eighth grade. The senior class show? Not the senior class oh, show, like say. the talent show, like the junior high, I guess. they won. Our junior high was seventh, eighth, and ninth. I guess it was seventh or eighth grade. This band had gotten a friend, like a group. There was like 10 people that played instruments or sang or whatever out of like all of, you know, the whole school or whatever. Okay. Uh, and I had played, they got in as a guitarist, a drummer, and like these two girls sang and they needed a bassist. Of course they did. Uh, Talking about a super group. <laughs> <laughs> this is how the Eagles started, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they were like, "Hey, did you, wanna... you play the bass?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had played the bass. I just wasn't like that tight with them. But they're like, "Hey, we're already in," and it was one of their original songs, like the girls' originals. It was like these, these, these two broads thought they were like, you know, Christina Aguilera and fucking Britney Spears. <laughs> Meanwhile, I was just trying to slap the fucking bass. You know what I mean? <laughs> Stage diver, crowd surf, or something. Um, so yeah, we played, they were already in, so we just, I just had, a, it was like, just had to do a couple rehearsals with them, and then, you know, the, 
than the big show. And I remember... Um, oh, my God. The band... So another... This group of kids that we knew... Hey, Johnny, you know that new sound you've been looking for? Boom, doom, 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 doom. Hey, man, the talent show's over. Unless you know a fat kid with a cheap bowl cut that can play the bass guitar. It was an Ibanez. No big deal. Oh, man. It was sweet. You must have stunk. Uh, I was okay. I carried... carried. Like Anthony Jr. up in your room wailing on that thing? I'm all my wee wee. <laughs> I was the only thing that was getting wailed on in the Kid's bedroom. getting pretty good. <laughs> Um, no, I uh... get your noodle hooked up to an amplifier. <laughs> um, I uh, what the fuck was I gonna say? Oh, but I remember the fucking the fucking bitch music teacher. I don't even know her name. She fucking, she thought we were like the you know the symphony. So the, the 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 we were in seventh or eighth grade, and then the ninth graders were like the kid. The kid is still a phenomenal guitar player. Like fucking sh- melt your face heavy metal like metallica shit and they played fade to black and at that point like it sounded you want to follow that no they were closing i mean come on what do they know how to put a show together don't be an asshole Foley. <laughs> i mean dude we were playing falling down we opened up the first half okay um but they played fade to black in my head as a metallica fan i was like this is like no for it was it was probably not as good but at the time you i was think? like this was phenomenal. I just think because that was such a complicated song for them to even be able to do it. W- what? I don't know who you are right now. <laughs> what do you mean? Because that's a complicated song. Well, no, I'm saying as a fucking eighth grader to watch these these kids like actually do a fucking Metallica song. Well, I was I was shocked. No, I didn't even have the I didn't have the confidence to do that. But we all wanted to watch it. We were like, and they're like. She was like, no, you can't. We're like, let us go watch them close out the fucking show. She's like, you are performers. You have to stay back. I'm like, I'm a fucking, I'm a fucking 300-pound fucking 12-year-old. Let me the fuck out there. What a fucking mosh. <laughs> fucking breaking my stones, lady. You're working at fucking a junior high right now. So, like Kippy retired after that one show. Played a couple more. <laughs> couple more dates. Couple more dates. Couple more T shows. For us, it was uh, uh, Patience by... Guns and Roses. Heard of it. There were a couple of bozos, I think, in my brother's grade. They could they nail they, in your eyes at that time. Yeah, nailed it. They were in. They, and you're like these, these. They were the guys with the acoustic guitars at parties. They got together. Mm-hmm. This one kid sung it, and yeah, it brought the fucking house down. My cousin also brought the house down at our talent show, doing a Michael Jackson impersonation that she had done for years. Fucking crowd pleaser. Real original. Murder. Get out of here, impersonator. Get out of here. <laughs> We were writing originals, man. <laughs> I was playing Falling Down. You should have heard me wailing. I was like, do 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 do. That's pretty much what I was like. It was like open E, then like, you know, yeah. Do 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 do. I was shredded. But I remember the the one of the guitarists or whatever had a wireless. He had like brought dude. He was walking around the fucking gym slash cafeteria slash auditorium. The cafe gymatorium, if you. He was killing it by the. Killing it by the vending machines. I stole that, I think, from Bill Ingvall. Um Yeah, he uh, and he was walking around. I remember just being like, this is the, fucking, the height of showmanship right here. He's kicking banana pudding in parents' faces. <laughs> <laughs> it was a scene. Uh, it was a good beautiful. time. Um, all right, moving right along. This is from Mark. Have you ever been skitching? What the fuck? Yeah, is- you know what skitching is. Oh my god! I got broke off, hammer drunk, skitching on a cab. Got speed. Skitching, hold on, skitching on a cab is when you hold, you're like on rollerblades, a bike, or a skateboard. You hold on the back of a car, like used- Back to the Future. Yes. Okay. But there was a Sega game, Sega. I think it was called Skitching, <sighs> where that was the game. But you had to like dodge things and switch car and whatever. That's trash. It was a great time. That is a garbage fucking video game. <laughs> I tried to buy it. I'm not even lying. I tried to buy it at a, at a fucking yard sale in my neighborhood. And my mom was like, absolutely not. It was $5. I'm like, this is a steal. These, these old, these, this old bastard doesn't know the price of fucking skitching. It should have been like. Mom, I got skitching. It should have been thirty nine ninety nine. Sounds like a rash you get. Yeah. It's all skitched up. Uh, but yeah, sorry. Continue, T-Bone. Oh, I just, the cab took off. There were two girls in the back seat. One of them locked eyes at me. I gave her the, like, the shh, be cool. And she was like, okay. <laughs> and then this, she opened her door. It was like 3 a.m. Ashland Avenue in Chicago. This cab took off, just gunned it. 
I instantaneously got speed wobbles and got pitched sideways. I'm midair, and I just see this chick looking back at me just like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Call me. I'm kind of glad that happened to you. Slam. <laughs> Skitchin. Rolled both ankles, hit my head, got a concussion, didn't walk for like three days. Uh, if I was in an Uber and I saw somebody, I'm definitely opening the door. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. I had uh, my buddies. Uh, who will remain nameless, but they were, I don't know if they were going to try to beat the cab or whatever, but one of them was like, got out, like tried to get out before the cab had like fully come to a stop. And he knew something was up. And this is back in the day. This is way pre-Uber. This is Philly, like 2008 or whatever. Where those cabs were, they're relatively lawless. You could like still smoke in them. Oh, yeah. And it was like, you know. And As Mr. DeRosa says, international waters. It is. It's international waters. And... I guess he thought they were going to run because mm-hmm. my one buddy opened the door. And I think he got out at a light. It was like, I'm out. And like, But there were still like four other people in the car or whatever. And he was like, there was like this old timer who was like, I've been beat too many. This ain't happening again. <laughs> Fucking lays on it. Hops on 676. Hops on the highway. Jesus. Yeah. With the kid hanging out? <laughs> no, he's gone. He pulls out a gun, and he's like, no one's going anywhere. They're like, what the fuck? They're like, dude, we'll pay you. We'll pay We're you. We're just skitching, man. Yeah. He pulled over on the side. Yeah, what? Of the, he pulled over on the side of the highway, and they got off on the on 670. They had to, like, jump over the barriers and shit. Hey, thanks, sir. Take care. <laughs> yeah, keep the change. Will that's you? not skitching, though. That's just falling out of a cab. Yeah, that's being a drunk asshole in fucking 2008. Toby skitched. Yeah. You, you just learned what it was 30 seconds I know, ago. I plugging it in every fucking two words. Well, you look like a skitcher. I'll be honest with you. I can really see it, though. It looks that. like you're sketching a little bit down there, to be honest with you. A little jammed up in your fucking underwear region. <laughs> your balls are sketching. <laughs> <laughs> your balls are sketching on your wiener. <laughs> um, all right, let's see here. Uh, I don't have cats, uh, but do you, this is for you two, I guess. Do you keep a spray bottle for your misbehaving cat? Mm-mm. I would never frame, spray my little stinky No. Dinky. Or a can of pennies for your dog. I guess if you shake it, it scares them. <laughs> I keep that, for, keep that for my younger brother. <laughs> Throw some nickels at him. Yeah, my mom had that when we were kids. Um, I think it was for us though. <laughs> that was a retirement fund. <laughs> She'd squirt us with the water bottle. We, uh, my buddy's dog, had an electric collar. Oh, we used to try those on all the time. Oh, walk yeah. In front of the TV. But there was a clicker. I, this, like the second level, there was a clicker that you could click it to train them. Mm-hmm. And it would like give them like a low voltage shock, I guess. So then the dog just became afraid of the remote. So we would sneak in late at night and that the thing would start barking. And you just fucking grab the closest remote and point it at him. It would fucking shy away. Jesus Christ. And keep your fucking mouth fucking shut. Fucking dirtbags. <laughs> Hey, I play a game. It's either that or I get fucking, I get grounded. Dude, I just remember that my mom, when we would play out in the neighborhood, she had a dog whistle she would blow to get us to come back to the a house. A dog whistle? You can't hear those. I think you can. They're just very high. No, no, not not not, not like a dog whistle, like only dogs. Like a, wh- a whistle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I think they're like more like. A long, was it a long, one of those old school long ones? Yeah. yeah. So like, Jesus Christ. Did she do like a little. <laughs> <laughs> was it a side? <laughs> You ever those little whistles with little fans in them? They were hot. Those things were hot for a minute. I don't know what you mean. The kazoo? Yeah, no, not a kazoo. What am I, a fucking jerk off? Yes. The little, they're like tube ones and they have little fans inside. And you go, wee. No, I don't Really? Mm-mm. Just call yourself a musician. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you want to be in my talent <laughs> show? I wonder why the band broke up. Yeah. Oh, that's good. My, my one neighbor had a, had, they had a cowbell to call him home for dinner when I was real little. There's, there's a lot of jokes there. I'm he's, leaving it on the table. He's here banging. He, he was a little chubby kid, too. He'd hear it banging throughout the neighborhood for him to come home for dinner. He'd come home wearing his shirt. Oh, what's going on, Mom? <laughs> <laughs> a little fat kid busting through the bushes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, this one's from Steve. Uh have you or anyone in your family ever used a stapler to fix the drooping fabric interior roof liner of your car? Jesus Christ, that was wordy. <laughs> yeah, it was wordier. I cleaned it up. No, we tucked it on the sides like a gentleman. <laughs> not going to puncture. Not going to puncture a good roof. Yeah, 
Those things were a tough look. Yeah. When that would start hanging that down. That starts drooping. Ooh. What was that? that? That doesn't happen in cars now. No. Cheap fabric. Yeah. Bad glue. I don't know. It was the demise of the auto industry. I don't know what to tell you, kid. Yeah. Detroit wasn't the same. <laughs> yeah. Fucking dropping it. <laughs> you got bad ceilings and slow sleds. Yeah. <laughs> Shit's changing. Yeah, fucking jar full of pennies. If it was a secondhand out. car, if it was like one of us driving it, we'd just cut that shit. Yeah. That's just getting ripped out. Yeah. 100%. Um, all right. Let's see. This one is from... Uh, sorry. This was... Uh, this is from Sam. Have you ever drove a dirt bike in a residential area? I don't think you've ever been on a dirt bike. I've been on a mini bike once. And a kid... This dirt bag kid in our neighborhood had a track around around the back of his house. Ooh. And I rode it... Well, yeah. Oh, oh man. man. That is the wrong side of the tracks. Oh, this place was... I don't even know if he had parents. I'll be honest with you. Sure. You know what I mean? It's a tough... Um, yeah, I rode it once, was petrified, almost burned my leg on the on the. I was scared of burning my leg on the muffler, mm-hmm. and that was that was it for me. Yeah, yeah, no, never. I don't know if I ever ridden a proper dirt bike. We had a, I had a mini bike, growing up. My brother had a go kart, uh, and then we rode quads and stuff. Like friends had quads that we would ride. No, yeah, but never. We uh, were. I was petrified of those things before I even knew what it was. Somebody got hurt on the on, on the quad. There was always that was that. that's how you break your neck. Breaking your neck. That's Apparently it. in the eighties and nineties, everybody was breaking their neck. I think a lot of people did. I yeah, think there was just a little wallless. Yeah. They were completely unsafe back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. I dumped my uh, mini bike first day I got it. I think I told you my dad got it for Christmas, and my mom was like, "Don't get him a fuck." I'm sure it was a contentious conversation, but he was like, Dude, "You don't think I'm gonna buy this kid fucking happiness?" Fucking mini bike, drove it the first day, guy fucking dumped it, tore up my fucking arm. My mom's like, what happened to your arm the next day? I'm like, I fell at school. She's like, yeah, it's Christmas break. You've been in school nine days. I'm like, been practicing on the base. (laughs) (laughs) You'll see. (laughs) You'll be sorry, ma. Um, This is from DeVry. Are you garbage if all four tires are different brands? Yes. Yes. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna say I haven't been jammed up in situations 100%. like that, but it's trashy. But I get what you gotta do. You gotta do what you gotta do. You know, if you need a new tire, you only got 150 bucks. You can't have a fucking. What are you gonna do? You know, what are you gonna replace them all just so that fucks up the alignment on the car? I just want you kids out there to know that. Not the brands. The yeah, sizes. It does. Nah. No, the brands sizes. Too. No. Different treads. I'm telling you, I've just been going through it. I've been through like four tires in the last year. I think it's four years. You're not, you're not really balanced when you're cruising. You got a heavy payload. The car drives sideways. <laughs> uh, this one's from Brandon. Uh, first question: Have you ever known anyone who married multiple spouses with the same name? So you like married two Trishes? That would be too weird for me. Too weird. Yeah. Also, too, if like my uncle brought home, or like you know my cousin brought home, like, hey, this is Megan, and then like four years later, this is Megan. Like, that's. You know, there's something here. Yeah, this you're a, a serial killer. There's something kooky going on. Yeah, no. Yeah, get Tinder, something. Mm-mm. I didn't even like the second marriage, no matter who they were. Really? So, oh, yeah, if somebody got divorced and then you were at, like, their second wedding? Mm-mm. No, I don't think so. I don't think, I don't have any... I think my opinions on that are well documented. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I have any, uh, other than my my parents... Nobody else had like a second marriage that I had to it. Like none of my friends have been married. Like I'm not at the age now where like you're at the age where somebody could get married, divorced, and then remarried. I'm still a little too young for that. Yeah, unless I don't they got ha- married at like 22. I don't have that. I know one of my boys just got married at 45. Late bloomer. When are you gonna get married? I'm Moving on. <laughs> Waiting out your marriage first. <laughs> Trying to get my hands on you. All right, go for the money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, t- dual income. We could do it. Get a better tax break. Nice insurance rates. I like it. <laughs> um, all right. Let's see. This is relatively on the same uh, same path as that. This is Chuck. Uh, new to Patreon. First comment. Does your family keep... Uh, we've talked about this. Does your family keep a record of cash that each guest provides as a gift for a party, confirmation, weddings, etc.? Then gift that family accordingly based on their initial gift when they have a party of their own. What the fuck was that? What? No. Yeah. But say, people say, do that at Say it one more time slower. Oh, you no. You keep track of how much y- you somebody gives you, so then when they have an event, you give them the same amount. No. What I, I would... No, that's insane to me. But people do know what you give at a wedding. 
Oh, of course. Like, I'm not even that guy. Like, I'm not the guy to be like, well, they only gave me 100 or they gave me 500. Oh, like, yeah, you but know. Yeah, as you're you going through the cards, you're like, 500. All right, Steve, <laughs> I didn't know you were fucking doing that well. Yeah. Um, so you do know, and it does sit with you. You do remember. 100%. I think I got an Amazon gift card from you that I'm pretty sure you took from your mom. That What was that for? My wedding. Oh, well, I wasn't invited. Lucky you got anything. <laughs> fucking prick. Look at it. Give you a bill for an order of crab cakes and some watered down martinis. <laughs> Bought my own chocolate fountain. Uh, yeah, no, that's that that that's kooky. I'll tell you this though. But I think the power move would be to keep track of it, and then when you go, you give up. Well, sure. That's why I would I wouldn't flex and give the same thing. I would go. I want you to know I'm better. You gave me two hundred. Here's three. Hmm. Don't think I don't know, because hmm. I do. I notice the uh, if I if, if I give a nice gift, I I will say I am looking for the thank you card at some point. Yeah, you know, waiting on a couple right now to be honest. With you. A couple of thank you cards should be coming my way soon, because I usually don't get them. I usually get a tongue in cheek, "Hey, thanks for coming." Yeah, well, they're not really happy you're there to be honest with you, and I mean now they have to deal with a bounce check. <laughs> I went to this broad's house. I didn't steal none of a Percocets, and I don't get a thank <laughs> you card. A, I don't get a thank you. <laughs> I do you the courtesy and not robbing you blind. <laughs> I could have took that silverware, but I didn't. Where we just did Robbie and Casey's wedding, and you wrote you spelled her name wrong on the envelope. I fixed it. <laughs> no, you didn't. Relax. Well, what is this fucking? What is it? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, he tried, he squirmed, he left. I first of all, I just wrote R and K, but just not thinking, and then I changed it to a C. I made it look cool. As in C, I'm an idiot. <laughs> you can't turn a K into a C. Yeah, man. you can. <laughs> no. Yeah, you can. Yeah, man. You can turn an E into a B, maybe. No, because I, I drew it out like calligraphy. Like I did the. I, I made it look like print. It looked cool. It did. <laughs> it didn't. And I called you out immediately when we gave the cards to Robbie. Fair enough. That's what I got to do. What are you going to do? Yeah. He also was like, what are you, animals? You both, Because it was that we gave it to him the next morning. Because, like, yeah, we gave it to him the next morning. You don't want to get lost on the table or something. Sure. I need, especially with that, I need an eye, to, I need an eye contact when I handed that over. He made fun of me because I didn't have. Oh, I, no. like, I, like I was like a fucking bread truck. That was a transfer. <laughs> Of funds. Uh, I needed a receipt for that. Yeah. No, no, no. Well, he called us out because we walked up to Robbie. Like, we were leaving the brunch the next day. Like, hey, thanks a lot. And I go, here. Mine's just blank. Like, I didn't write two Robbie. Because also, it's like, you know who you are. It's not like it's going to mix but up with the other But they get confused weddings. with that stuff. What do you mean? Was there a card inside that had your name on it? Yeah, of course. Oh, I had my Mine was watermarked. <laughs> so he knows. <laughs> the bills have a special ink on them. Every, <laughs> he wrote an H folio on every bill. <laughs> It was like a hot script in Hollywood. Sealed it in wax <laughs> with your initials. I would love to start doing that. Yeah, someone does. I feel like I just watched something where, like, that's... It ain't that big of a deal. It's like you could do it with like, with crayons, I think. You can melt a crayon, mean, sure. and then just you got to get your family crest stamper. <laughs> that's all you got to get is your family crest <laughs> stamper, guys. You know what I'm talking about? The wax on the cards, on envelopes. It's real classic. H. Foley Crest is a chicken wing and a broken snowblower. <laughs> <laughs> and an unplugged an unplugged dryer. <laughs> Absolutely. Those things are cool. Um, all right. This one's from Zach. Haven't had a question read yet. Has anyone in your family ever been cast as a member at Medieval Times? Cast as a member? They call people, they actually call people out from the crowd? No. I, I mean, ooh, if they ever worked at Medieval I, Times. I don't know. I don't know what he's asking. Never there. been. Never been either. No. Would love to go. Oh, we could go. That could be a thing we do. I wouldn't mind getting my hand on one of them turkey legs. Oh, I did go. I went in uh, I went in uh, junior high or elementary school they took us. Did it smell like horse shit? I would imagine it would. I don't it's remember. It's got to be tough to eat around that stuff. I think they're Johnny on the spot with the cleanup. Yeah, Still, I feel like they got to be. Horse shit? Come on. Well, I don't think they're not keeping the horses in there. The horses are, like, kept outside and then, trow- you know, they... they they're still taking dumps in there. Come on. I think less, though. They ask them, hey, do this outside before the showtime. <laughs> You're performers. You can't be shitting out there. I don't know. I could, you I can't could. be shitting during a performance. I don't think I could, I don't think I could eat 
it even with the remote smell of horse or horse shit. I don't recall, to be honest with you. Uh, I also just remember it being, I was just like, this is, uh, it's tough for me to get lost in that. How are they serving food in there, too, with that going on? I mean, it's on? a fucking, ch- it's a turkey leg. It's not food. It's not, Still. Like, it's not like a fork, which is not a chef tasting. I think there would be some type of FDA regulations. FDA? No. I don't know. Yeah, I know you don't know, because that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> oh, is that what gave me away? <laughs> Um. Yeah, no, no. But there's one right in Jersey. We could totally go. I know. He knows, guys. He I knows. Know. He knows. He knows. All right. This one's from Mark. Um. Do you have? Uh. Wait. Do you or have you ever shopped at a grocery store that had the anti-theft wheels on the carts? <laughs> that really tells you something about where you live, <laughs> in a multitude of ways. Because if you're living in a place where people are stealing the carts. It's a bad luck. It's a bad luck. And it's also if they're stealing the cards so much that they have to do that. Like I like I take my mom's neighborhood, like they don't have them. And also like no one's stealing a card. And if they do, it's like, yeah, just take the one. Like, you know what I mean? They don't care that some one gets taken a year or a month or whatever. Yeah, you gotta be losing a lot of cards to invest in that kind of technology. Yes. I don't know how they do that. There's an invisible fence or if it's, it's, it's radar. It's like a shock collar. It's got to be something. <laughs> or there's just some guy in a computer room like hit 32 and then he fucking sees it's like bait car. <laughs> Seizes the engine on it. Oh, man. That's um, a tough look. Shopping carts outside of a supermarket and supermarket parking lot are the toughest look. Sure. You see a guy walking down a street, probably... No one's ever pushing that down a street they probably should be walking down. No. It's always they're on the shoulder. They're like, there's a bumper in it. A lot it. of highways, under bridges, under overpasses. That's where you see the solo shopping cart. Yeah, it's a tough, yeah. tough, tough look. Frightening. I was, feel like I was just somewhere where someone had one. And I was like. We drove. We, we were, wherever we were driving, there was a shopping cart on the one side of the road. I can't remember where we were. No, but like I was like. Like a friend? Oh, I think it was my mother-in-law took one. What? Yeah. I think she returned it. Oh, no. What they had is they had the basket. That's what they had. They stole a basket. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. They like st- a handheld like, I know exactly what you're talking about. I don't know. Now, listen. Now, I, those I wouldn't mind stealing. It, I got to give you. It was a pretty. We went. To, we had like a picnic. And it was like fucking perfect. <laughs> I, I don't know if she bought it or what. But it was in the apartment, and we took it. I was like, oh, this thing's fucking, this is a good move. Yeah. Sanitize that up real quick. <laughs> you got bad. a freshie. <laughs> yeah. I like that move. Wasn't too bad, but I remember looking at it. I saw that in the house. I'm like, these don't belong in homes. <laughs> I know that. But it's a pretty good snag. I got to give it to you. She's got, she's got a sleeve of those produce bags. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you take your lunch in. <sighs> oh, man. You got a bucket full of twist ties, too. I remember my dad. I, I don't know. I think it was just looking back. The way my dad would operate a twist tie, it was like he invented them. Oh, it's crazy. And I remember as a kid, I, could, I don't know if I didn't have enough torque or you something. Didn't. Yeah. Or like the dexterity to hold it tight and get it. I couldn't put a twist tie on to save my life. Meanwhile, no. this guy's making balloon animals. That and, and how they stirred shit. Like, how good they, how fast they can make a spoon move in something. I was like, what are you, fucking Superman? Well, we used to talk, I think we've mentioned this off air, but uh, the thing for us was ice cream with, like, a little bit of Hershey syrup. Like, Briar's ice sure. cream, a little bit of Hershey syrup. And then my dad would fucking <sighs> whip it. And he was the only one. And the kids were too, I don't know if, I did, again, didn't have them. Move. It didn't, yeah. But, like, he would, like, too wet. And then I did it as an adult. I was like, oh, this fucking. Talk is. about blow your hair back. Yeah. Simple Briar's vanilla and a little bit of fucking Hershey's. Whip that up into soft serve. <laughs> Get the kids. Brush your teeth. Put some Listerine in because it's fucking good night. Yeah. That the is best. A, that is a wrap. Tough to recreate on the second bowl, too. Oh, uh, because there's already. I don't know what it was, but have going back and recreating that was tough. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I ever had to uh, do it on multiple bowls. <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, we got it. Uh, let's do like two more, and then we got to yeah. get out of here. Let's see. We did the uh, dropping of the roof fair. Uh, so from Mark, have you ever been named in a restraining order? God, no. Yeah, no. Jesus Christ. I don't even think anybody I know that has admitted to me they've been named. I'm sure I know somebody who has been in a restraining order. Sure. 
a boyfriend girlfriend type thing, husband's wife type thing. I would have. I know too many dirt bags for that not to be a case. Even Somebody's got to keep two hundred feet away. Even if it was filed because it's like, hey, we filed it because there's some. You know what I mean? Even you know, just playing, uh, playing, yeah, setting you up for something else. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I'm. Sh- I would have to assume. Yeah. Yeah, we uh, gotta have friends who can't get within a hundred feet of Skrillex or something. <laughs> Skrillex. Skrillex. <laughs> I'm banned from the juggalos. <laughs> Turns out ICB can't take a joke. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then we'll get out of here on this one. This one's from Jared. Uh, is it tra- n- this is more of a debate. Is it trash to call ramen noodles oodles of noodles? I always thought that That was a brand, I feel. I don't know. Let me look. I I, we was. used to call it Oodles of Noodles. I think because Oodle, Oodles of Noodles was a brand. Was it? Yeah. Yeah, it came in a cup. But no. there was That's cup of noodles. But there, they, I think that was also Oodles of Noodles. Yeah, Oodles of Noodles TV commercial, 1979. Oh. What are Oodles of Noodles? We were a top- Ramen noodles packaged with a variety of seasonings sold by Nissan Foods. Nissan, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, we're top ramen. That's how we operate. We were always top ramen people. Chicken flavor. We were. No, I didn't have it until I went to college. Oh my! We were. He, my brother loved that shit. Oh, yeah. We used to get creative with it too. Chop up hamburger. Oh. <laughs> chop up. Not put the seasoning in. Chop up hamburger and put ketchup in it, and a little bit of uh, uh what's it called? A one. It was nice. Try it at home. Don't. don't glass, nice you, cold glass of milk. If you do, don't tag me. Chop up hamburger. Saute it in a little A one. Put a little bit of ketchup with the noodles. Clean living. Oh no. That's it. I'm out. That's 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 a very tough look. <laughs> Literally just made my blood run cold. Gang, this has been a family <laughs> episode. We love you, Kippy. What do you got for him? Uh, guys, as um at Kevin Ryan Comedy on all social media. I'm almost at ten thousand on Instagram. Let's fucking we all see. are. Let's fucking get some a little closer to the more. Let's just get the fucking numbers up. You know what I mean? Uh, come to a live show. Get some merch. Yeah. Fucking tell a friend. Don't I don't care. We're just fucking happy. Listen, we fucking love you guys. We love you. Thank you so much. We appreciate all the support. And we'll see you next week. Peace. Peace.